Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. One of the most popular requests I get is doing attendance, whether it's students or employees or your dogs, making sure they're all home at the end of the day. I don't know. So we're going to do attendance today. I'm going to show you how to set up an attendance database, have a list of students, and then you can add them every day when it's time for class. And then we'll do a report and so we can see how many times each student was present or absent. And when we're all done, it'll look something like this. You put your attendance date in here, show attendance. It'll show you if you've already done attendance that day. You come over here, you check whether or not your student was present, right? All right, now tomorrow you open the database. This is going to default to tomorrow's date, whatever date you open it, right? Hit show attendance. Oh, there's no attendance data for this day. Hit add students. It'll bring your students in. You just check which ones are present or not present. You can flip it whichever way you want to do it, right? And then when we're all done, we'll make an attendance report. You click on the report. It brings that up. You can do it between two dates and you can see each student, what dates they were present and absent, give you a count of each student. And then at the bottom, we'll give you a count of everybody. And that, that's pretty cool stuff, right? So I'm going to walk you through building all of this from the ground up. Now, this is an expert level video. What does that mean? Well, I consider expert the middle ground, basically intermediate between beginner and developer. So it's a little bit beyond the beginners, but you don't need any coding. We can do everything I just showed you with zero visual basic programming. All right, so it's all intermediate level stuff. And here are the prerequisite videos that you should watch first before trying to follow this one. First, watch my blank template video, which is how I explain how I build the database that I use for most of my tech help videos, including this one, right? A basic main menu, a customer list, customer form, and so on. You should know how to concatenate two strings together. You should know how to build basic queries and use query criteria. You should know how to work with continuous forms. It is vital that you understand how to work with relationships between multiple tables. Right, students and attendance are gonna be related and you gotta understand that relationship. And you should know how to make relational combo boxes. We're gonna make a combo box to pick the student, okay? You should understand how to format your dates properly. I personally like to use the ISO date format. It looks like this, year, month, day, because it's unambiguous no matter what country you're in. So watch this if you're curious about how to use this. Very important that you understand how to use append queries. We're gonna use an append query to copy the students into the next day's attendance roster, okay? So make sure you watch this video. And make sure you know how to get a value from an open form. All right, so we're gonna get the date criteria from our main menu form into our other stuff, okay? Now these are all free videos. They're on my YouTube channel, they're on my website. Go watch all of these and then come on back. Okay, don't be complaining that I didn't show you how to do some of this stuff. It's all in the prerequisite videos. And there might be some more later on. I'll mention them if there are. Okay, all right, let's get started. Okay, so here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free database. You can grab a copy off my website if you want one. Now, since I already have customers in here, we're going to just use customers as students. So when I say students, I'm talking about customers. They're already in here. We're just gonna use these guys, okay? And I'm going to use the is active field to indicate which students are enrolled in my class. Now, yes, if you wanna talk about a more advanced database where you got multiple classes and multiple teachers and students for different classes, yes, we'll talk about that later, okay? For now, let's just focus on one class. So let's make a student query, create query design that shows just our active customers. So that's our list of students, right? Okay, so I'm gonna bring in customer T and let's bring in customer ID and let's down here, instead of just first name and last name, let's make a student name field, student name. And that's gonna be first name and a space and last name, all right? That's string concatenation here. I'll zoom in so you can see it better. Shift F2, all right? Student name colon first name and a space inside of double quotes and last name, all right? String concatenation. And we'll need that is active field. Where are you? Way down there in the bottom. And we're going to set a criteria to true. So I only see the active uh, customers. Those are my students. And let's save this control S as my student 
Q. That's my student query. If you want to sort it, you can. It doesn't really matter. All right, and then run it, and there we go. And we got way too many active students. Let's whittle this down to like six. All right, so I want, uh, let's see here. We'll get rid of uh, you. You, 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 you. Who else do I want? I want James Kirk. I love James Kirk in there. And let's keep, uh, let's see, what we got here? Let's go, Mr. Spock. Okay, we got like six students. All right, good enough. So now, if I run it, there we go. We got six active, small group sessions. Right? That's what I used to do, small group sessions. Okay. I have my own computer training room. I had a max of eight. I'd take eight students at a time. Usually it was six or seven. All right, now we need a table where we're going to store our attendance data. All right, each class for each student is going to get an attendance bit of data, right? So create table design. So we got attendance ID. That's our auto number. And yes, it's attendance. I always, it's sometimes I always want to put an E here. And I think to myself, okay, for, a for attendance, we're going to the dance. We're going to attend the dance. That's how I remember it. Stupid little thing, I know. Now, that's our primary key. I always forget to click the thing, but you can click on the thing if you want to, right? Otherwise, it'll ask you. Uh, customer ID, that's our foreign key. So this is a number of type long integer. And that'll be set for us automatically. Uh, let's put a class date. Now, you can do a class date, class date time, whatever you want to do. Um, generally, I just put the date in here. So I'm going to make the default value equals date, just like that. Equals date, and then an open and close parentheses. That'll use the date function to put the current date in there. If you want the time as well, like if you really care, like up to the minute when the attendance was taken, some places do. They want to know when this, the teacher actually did attendance. That's fine. You can store the time in here too. We're going to build the database, assuming it's also got times. But I'm just going to work with dates. They're much easier. And they just look more pleasant. So <laughs> then we've got present. Was the student present or not? Yes or no? Okay, now the default value for this is up to you. If you want to default them all to no and have the teacher has to check them on to make sure that they were in their seats, great. If you want to default that to yes, and that way the teacher just has to check who's not there, again, totally up to you. That's your use case. I'm just showing you how to put the Legos together. All right, so let's save this as attendance T. That's my attendance table. Close it up. Now, I always find that stuff is easier when you've got data in the tables to work with, just some sample data. So I'm gonna open up a student query so I can see what the, who the students are. So I got their IDs, right? And the attendance table is gonna look like this. Let's say we're working with today's date. Today is, it's actually, today is actually May 30th. I'm recording this for May 29th because I got really busy and didn't get a video out. So this, this is actually the first retroactive video I've done in a long time. This is gonna be published on the 30th, but it's for the 29th, okay. <laughs> So the first day, let's let's do it for 5.30, right? So James Kirk, 5.30, was present, right? Mr. Spock, 17, same date, was present, okay? Mr. Barkley, same date, was not present, okay? Me, I was also playing hooky, okay? Wesley Crusher, he's a good boy, he was present. And finally, Will Riker was also present, okay? So that's how it's going to look when it's all said and done. And every day, you'll have another set of six entries or however many students you have, and you'll just check in these boxes. All right, save changes, yes, close it. Okay, so that's done. And that's really all we need for now for our tables. All right, now let's work on our attendance form. Now our attendance form is gonna be a continuous form in the Tech Help Free template. I've got a blank one here that I use. It's basically my template. I'm going to copy and paste that and call it attendance F my attendance form. Right click, design view, open up the properties for the form, set the record source to that attendance table that we just made. I am going to delete these fields and I'm gonna delete one of these labels up here because I'm in the habit now with small forms like this, I just make one big label going across the top and I just put the fields in there accordingly. Now let's open up the add existing fields box you don't really need the attendance ID on this form. In fact, I generally, I only really put IDs on forms if I need their value or if I'm doing it like a beginner class to teach my students how IDs work. Usually you don't even need them on the forms. But we do need the customer, 
but I'm not going to bring the customer ID from here because I don't want it as a text box. I want it as a combo box, so we'll use the wizard in just a minute for that. I do need the class date time. Click, drag, drop it in the detail section. Get rid of the label that comes in with it, and then slide this guy over here like that. Make it a little tiny bit bigger, like so. Okay, and we need a box for present. Drop that over here, and again, delete the label that comes with it. All right, we'll slide you over there. Actually, this is probably a little bit too big. If you're gonna put time in here, it needs to be bigger. If not, if I'm just doing dates, you can do that. We're gonna do date, and then I'm, I also like to show the day of the week. I'll show you how to do that too. All right, next we need our student. For that, we're going to make a relational combo box, which that's right there. Click, drag, drop into the detail section. I want the combo box to get the values from a table or query. Where is the list of students? That's in the student query right there. That's our list of students. Next, I need customer ID and student name. You don't need to bring his active into here. Okay, next, how do you wanna sort it? Student name is fine. Next, now, since this is based on a query, we don't get the little box there that says you can hide the ID field. So we have to manually hide the ID field just by making it its width zero. Go past it like that to make sure you're at zero. That's what it's gonna look like. All right, next. Now, what is the bound field? What is the field that actually has the value that you want in it? Well, that's the ID, right? Next. You wanna remember it for later use or store it in a field? Well, in this case, I wanna store it in a field. I wanna store that customer ID in the customer ID in the attendance table. Okay, I'm picking a customer ID, which is my student ID basically, and I'm storing it in the customer ID field of the attendance table. Next. What label would you like for it? Doesn't matter, we're gonna delete it anyways, and then hit finish. All right, there's that label, goodbye. Slide this up into place like so, right about like that, looks good. One thing I don't like about the combo box wizard, this is one of my access pet peeves, is that it doesn't give you the option to name that box, it calls it combo 62. I'm gonna call this my student combo, and yes, it's bound to the customer ID, that's fine. All right, let's shrink this space up there. Save it, close it, let's open it and see what we got. Okay, looks pretty good. Couple little things. First of all, let's left align that date. And I hate how the date picker just kind of hangs, hangs out there. We really don't need the date picker for this form because we're never gonna really set that in here. We'll do it somewhere else, I'll show you where. So I'm gonna make this, I'm gonna turn off that date picker. It's under data. Nope, I apologize, my bad. It's under format. <laughs> Sometimes I, even I forget these things. I don't use this that often. And then turn this guy off to never. See, even me, I use access all day long and I still forget where the stuff is on menus. That's why people are like, well, where, where is it? I can't, I don't know. I had to open up access and look. I don't have all of these screens memorized. All right, so I'll left align that. I'm also gonna go into the format here. Now you could just go with short date if you want to, or you could put your own custom date in here. I like to do something like this. Watch. Why, 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 why? Here, I'll zoom in so you can see it better. Shift F2. Why, 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 dash, mm, dash, dd, space, dash, space, ddd. -D. Anybody know what that is off the top of your head? Well, this is my favorite ISO date format, right? Year, month, day. The most logical of all date formats and then I put a space and a dash there, which is a literal space and a dash. And this is the three digit abbreviation or three character abbreviation for the day of the week. That's often very handy to have when you're dealing with calendars or attendance or any of that kind of stuff, All right? You wanna know what the day of the week is. All right, save it, close it, open it. Oh, look at that. And for some reason, I forgot to left align it. <laughs> so <laughs> let's do that. Click, format, left align. That was what I, what I went in there for, all right. One more time. Oh, it looks so much better now. See, and you can quickly and easily see it's Friday. All right, let's put the labels across the top. What I do is I just take this guy, stretch it all the way out as far as you need it like that. And this is gonna be class dates. You can put class date time in there if you want to. A bunch of, I'm just holding down the space key. Nothing fancy, right? Student, space key, and then present over here. That's all. I just find that's easier than dealing with multiple little labels and you got to move them around and that's a big pain all right attendance there we go beautiful all right so we got this all set up now what we're going to do next is we're going to we're going to use this date field we have over here and make this the default value for the next guy that goes in here 
right? So I can change this, and then the next dates to come in here will be whatever date it, that is. We're gonna make this button open up this form. Then we're gonna make our, our little button down here to add the students for the date that's in this box. So I can change this to the 31st, and then pff, students come in automatically. We're gonna do all of that in tomorrow's video. So tune in tomorrow, same bad time, same bad channel. Members, you can watch it right now because I'm going to record it in just a minute. And for those of you who are my regular viewers, I know today this video is being released for Thursday, the 29th of May, 2025. Tomorrow's Friday. I normally do quick queries on Fridays, but I'm going to do this video tomorrow instead. We got pushed back a day because of Memorial Day. I might do quick queries on Saturday. I might. If not, I'm going to push it to next week. But I'm definitely going to continue this with part two tomorrow, Friday. All right, so that's going to do it, folks. That is your attendance video. That's your tech help video, part one for today. Hope you learned something. Oh, someone's beaming in. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you tomorrow for part two. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that Show More link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus, you get access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject. And you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.